Some of you need a discovery breakthrough. You need revelation for your life. The wisdom of the world and your own wisdom and power cannot get it. You need God's revelation. You need a revelation breakthrough, a discovery breakthrough. There's another type of breakthrough some of you may need is a development breakthrough. Where you think, sometimes, most of the time we think, God, I need a breakthrough. Change him. You know, I need a breakthrough, God. Give me this, do that, do this. And it's an external thing when sometimes the, the breakthrough is, is what God wants to do inside of you. It's a development breakthrough. There is a personal development where God just takes you, changes you from the inside, and you just broke through. Your circumstances didn't change, but you changed, and you had a personal breakthrough. That's a development. God, and I believe there's some of us in here that need a development breakthrough. There are some of us in here that need that, that other breakthrough, just an advancement where God wants to, desires to, is going to take you to a whole new level a whole new level of walking in the Spirit, a whole new level of anointing and authority, a whole new level of leadership where God just advances you in His will and purpose in your life. Man, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm praying for all three of these. Come on now. I'm praying for some discovery. I'm praying for some development. I'm praying for some advancement. God, I want you to break through in my life. Man, you need it. You need it. Let me, let me give you this foundational um, breakthrough truth, okay? This is like foundational for the series. And in, in today's message today, what I lo- I'm going to give you some foundational truths of breakthrough that you need to know. You need to understand some things about the breakthrough that God wants to do, that God is going to do in your life. And then, and then we're going to transition to the first key to your breakthrough, which is the power of prayer. The power of prayer. We're going to talk about that. But first, let me, give you, let me give you some breakthrough truths, okay? Write this down. This is in your notes. This is so important for you to get this in your spirit. If you really want to see God show up in your life, in whatever area of need that you have, here it is, write it down. My, write it down, my response in the middle of my need positions me for breakthrough. This is so important for you to get. My response in the middle of my need positions me for breakthrough. Now, this is so important. I'm gonna, we're going to have to play along here. I mean, you know, you, need to, you can't just receive your breakthrough. You've got to respond for your breakthrough. <laughs> you can't just sit here and say, okay, God, give me a breakthrough. No, there's some response. So I'm going to help you out. And we're going we're gonna to repeat this just to make sure you got this. Everyone repeat it. After me, one, two, three, my response in the middle of positions me for. Okay, do it again. My in the middle of positions me for. My in the middle of my positions me for. See, breakthrough happens within. That's where, breakthrough, that's where breakthrough happens. It first has to happen within me. So a lot of times we want the circumstances to change. It amazes me how many people come to church. They'll even come religiously. They'll come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday with no intention at all of changing. It just amazes me. I mean, like, like just will come to church with no intention at all. That, that I need, there's, a, there's something that needs to change inside of me. My response to the needs around me need to start changing in order for God to show up and take control and break through in my life. My response needs to change. My response to my need. Now, the only reason why you even need a breakthrough is because you're in need. You know that? Like, yeah, that's, I know that was, wow, wow, that was deep. Look, the only reason why we want God to show up, like, like God, man, I need God in this, is because you have a need area in your life. Can I tell you that that is God's design? That's intentional. That if you are walking with Christ, if you are walking in the Spirit, He will always lead you to circumstances and seasons of need. Always. Always. Uh, uh, you see it all throughout the Scripture. God, when people are walking and obeying God, they come to the end of the road of themselves where God needs to show up and break through for them. You see it all throughout Scripture. You see it in Abraham where, where God tells Abraham, you're going to bear a son. And Abraham's like, okay, God, I mean, I'm old, but okay. And, and then he tries to take it in his old, own hands. His wife, Sarah, says, hey, hey, let's just try to, let's try to work it out, which some of us try to do with our needs ourselves. Let's just work it out. What if we do this and we do that? We can do it. We can make it work. Maybe God meant this. Let me just, let me just manipulate the situation here. And then, and so you, but God puts him in a position of need so that he can break through, so that he can provide. You see it in, in Moses' life. Moses comes to a literal dead end of leading the people to a dead end, leading the Israelites to the Red Sea. Okay, I, I need God to show up now. 
until he raises the staff and steps out in faith and God breaks through that Red Sea. You see, if you're walking with God and, you're a, and you are walking in obedience to God, in the will of God, you will come up against seasons of need. You will. The opposite is true of this as well. And I want you to just kind of maybe examine some things with this statement. If you are not in need today, then you are not walking with God today. Okay, because God will always put you in places that are uncomfortable, that are unpleasant, that need his help. See, if you're not walking in need, then you're walking under your own strength. If you don't need God in your daily life, if you don't need God to accomplish the will and the purpose of your life, then you got, you got the wrong dream, the wrong vision, maybe even the wrong direction. Because, because God will always lead you to these seasons of need, seasons of need. The bottom line is, we need the power of God to show up. We need the power of God to show up in our life. There's six keys. There's six responses, really, but it's six parts, six, six parts of the power of God that we need to show up in our life. Six keys, really, to experience a breakthrough. We're going to talk today about the power of prayer. But before we do, I want to draw some truths about your breakthrough through a well-known story in the Bible. Um, most of you know this story. There was 39, a total of 39 miracles that Jesus performed. In the, at least scripturally documented 39 miracles according to the four Gospels. Luke actually says that, that there were so many miracles, if you would have recorded them all, there wouldn't have been enough paper. Like Jesus was just, everywhere he was going was just miracle, miracle, miracle. But there's 39 recorded miracles, including the virgin birth and the resurrection of, of Jesus. So, but there's only one miracle, only one miracle that's recorded in all four of the Gospels. You guys know what it is? You know? There was one here. We've got some Bible scholars in the room today. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. We're going to do some more Bible study, though. No, uh, you probably knew it. You just didn't want to shout it out. But the feeding of the 5,000. That's, that's the, the miracle that's recorded in all five of the Gospels, which, which give a clear, really good, a, a really good picture of, of when you come into a place of need. When you, when you just, you don't have the resources you need to survive. Like you came to the end of yourself. And that's what happened with a group of people that were following Jesus like so many of, of you are. You're following Jesus. You're, you're doing what you should be doing. Yet you come to a place in a season or a circumstance of need. Wait a second, God. I need you now to show up. And that's where all these 5,000 people found themselves in, following Jesus, hearing the teachings, seeing the miracles, and still I'm in need after following Jesus? I'm in need. Well, here's some truths about your need, okay? Write these down. Number one, in the middle of your need, you need to know that breakthrough is being formed, okay? That the need is creating the environment. It's creating the climate for the power of God to break through, your need is being formed in the middle of your breakthrough. Could it be that the only thing blocking your breakthrough is your ability to believe it's possible? All right, I'm going to say that again. Could it be that the only thing blocking your breakthrough is your ability to believe that it's even possible? And I don't know if you figured this out or not about God, but God will often lead us into, into places of need and places of pain. He'll lead us into, and God, God very often uses need and pain to get our attention. See, sometimes when we're not in need or we're not in pain, we don't cry out to God and we don't pay attention to God and we, we, we focus on the other things of life. He will use the need to get your attention. He'll use the pain in life to get your attention. It was C.S. Lewis who said this. He said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, but he shouts to us in our pain. He's going, hello. You think I just, you know, created you to live life for yourself, to yourself, unto yourself? No, I created you for so much more in this life. God often uses need to get our attention. And God often uses, he uses pain to prepare us for breakthrough. So if you're in pain right now, congratulations. You may be positioned for breakthrough, okay? If you're in need, if you find yourself, man, I'm at the end of my rope of my marriage, my kids, my career, my, you find yourself in need, then, then what I will say is, great. You're, you're in the right climate and atmosphere for God to break through in your life. Breakthrough is being formed in the middle of your need. You need to understand that. There needs to be a, a shift in your faith and in your mind and your understanding in the middle of your need. Breakthrough is being formed. Look what happens in John chapter 6. In John's account of the feeding of the 5,000, 
It said sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. When Jesus looked up, he saw a great crowd coming toward him. One gospel account actually says that, that one of the disciples came to him at this moment and said, they're hungry. It's late. They're going to starve if we don't do something about this. So Jesus says to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Jesus is asking a, a where question. Where? Where should, we, where should we go? And Philip responds with a how, okay? Just so you know. So, so when God, when, whenever God asks, gives you a where question, don't respond with a how, okay? Here's, here's, here's what Philip, it says that, he says, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? But Jesus asked this only to do what? To test him, because he already had in mind what he was going to do. You see, how are we, how are we responding to the need in our life? Sometimes, sometimes your need is a response test from God. Are you hearing me? Sometimes, sometimes, God, sometimes God is testing your response to the need. He, listen, he already knows when and where the breakthrough is coming. He's already decided he's going he's gonna to work on your behalf. He's already decided he's going to complete your salvation. He's already decided to be your God, your provider, your sustainer, your strong tower. He's already decided these things. Now he just wants to test you in your need to develop your faith. Sometimes your need is just a response test. And by the way, Peter, Peter responds, how? How are we going to? He just like, I don't know. I, what, what do you got, Jesus? Uh, um, and so I'm, I'm convinced that if, P, if Philip would have responded not with, with doubt in the middle of his need, if he would have responded with faith, then, then the miracle would have came in another fashion. It wouldn't, have been, it wouldn't have been the four accounts of the feeding of the 5,000. It would have been the four accounts of the bread maker, the, the marketplace. That's what it would have been. Because if Peter would have said, I know right where it's at, Jesus. Just send me and I'll go. Said, there, I know where it's at. Because you're going to do something, Jesus. You're going to do something. Like, like when you turn the water and the wine, you're going you're gonna to do a miracle in the middle of this marketplace. Philip would have been inside. Or, or when, when, like when Jesus says, go and get that donkey, there's a donkey over there. I prepare for it. And the disciples are just like, okay. Uh, and then Jesus said, there's a donkey here. A little, and they, there it is. The miracle would have showed up in a different fashion if he would have responded with faith instead of doubt. And this is what happens to most of us in the middle of our need. Our need robs us of our faith. Our need robs us of believing God for the miraculous, for his provision. And we begin to doubt God. Some of us begin to pull away from things that we shouldn't be pulling away from. We pull away from serving God. We pull away from using our gifts. We'll pull away from even fellowship with the saints. We pull away from, we just maybe even pulling away from church entirely because our need and we've isolated ourselves. And that's, when you, but God is so good. Jesus is so gracious he's so faithful he didn't you know he re, he did that to test philip but i'm, I'm thankful he didn't he, he knows where the provision is coming see if it didn't come there he's got another breakthrough for you you say oh i missed my chance i missed my opportunity no you did not god is the god of second third fourth unlimited chances there's a breakthrough coming as long as you will believe him for the breakthrough start responding in faith because breakthrough happens where within me first it happens within me Here's another truth we learn. In the middle of your need, breakthrough comes one step at a time. Breakthrough comes one, steps, one step at a time. And sometimes it looks like breakthrough happens suddenly, especially when you're on the outside looking in. Someone else's life go, man, or some other ministry, or like, wow, man. What's God doing over there? But I promise you, it, breakthrough does not happen suddenly like that. There's, I promise you, with every breakthrough, there were some behind-the-scenes steps that were taken, hearts that were postured, submission to God's will that happened along the way before the breakthrough came. You need to position yourself for breakthrough, and you need to start stepping. Like, some of you need a job. You need a job. How many of you know if you need a job, you need to start putting in some applications? You need, you need to take some steps. First, take a shower shave your grudgy self, go, go put on some good clothes, and go look for a job, log online, update your resume. You need to start taking some steps, okay, because breakthrough happens one step 
at a time. Some of you are waiting for the manager to show up knocking on your door. That's not how a breakthrough happens. And then you open the door and he goes, oh, the Holy Spirit led me right to this house. I was in a time, a season of prayer and fasting in the wilderness and God led me right here to you and I'm here to offer you a job. Come on, that's not how a breakthrough happens. And then according to you, he go and guess what? It's, it's, it's for a lot of pay with little hours, no, no evenings and weekends. Come on, man. Breakthrough happens one step at a time. You're waiting. You're sitting back. Just, no, you need to start. Someone needs to just start taking a step in the direction of their breakthrough today. Someone needs to just start taking faith steps, obedience steps in the direction of their breakthrough. You know, we, uh, just by way of announcement, because it kind of fits here, we, uh, been praying for a long time from the very beginning we had this dream that discovery church would have a dream center we would have we would have our own dream center and and we just in the month of august here god just did one of those development breakthroughs where we got the license to to um to start the discovery or the bakersfield dream center here in bakersfield it is amazing for those of you that don't know the dream center it's an amazing um, outreach mission ministry. We're going to be meeting needs of hunger, homelessness, sex trafficking, addiction, youth mentoring. Wow. We have so many, like, like we, we, there was a development breakthrough that happened, but I'm telling you, there are some steps that we're taking. We had to take some obedience steps in the direction because it, it, even this, what God has done, okay, there were some obedience steps that were taken in order to get the breakthrough. I don't know what your breakthrough is and what direction you need to start stepping, but someone needs to get to stepping today, okay? Tell your neighbor, get to stepping. Yeah, amen. Get to stepping. Breakthrough happens one step at a time. Some of you need a, need a, need a girlfriend. You need a boyfriend. You need, you're looking. Can I just tell you something? You need to, you need to start taking a step, all right? Some, some, maybe on this church, the guy, guy likes the girl on this church. She, you think she's cute and stuff. I'm prophesying now, okay? <laughs> Here's what you need to do. After church today, you need to go up to her. You need to step up to her and say, where are we going for dinner? No. And you say, hey, can I take, can, can, I, can I go out to lunch with you? And if she says no, invite her friend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you need to start stepping for some breakthrough. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't. It's going to happen now. We're going to have some discovery marriages up in here. As long. So Jesus says, Mark 6, Jesus says, so how many loaves do you have? Like, like take inventory. Then he goes, how many loaves do you have? I need you to go see. Jesus already knew. He knew what he was going to do. He knew what he had. Go see. Oh, so you, you need a financial breakthrough? Go see. What do you need? You need, you need breakthrough in your, your, your marriage? You need, you need to start a dream center? Go see. You need a breakthrough in your marriage? Go see. Somebody just needs to start taking some steps in the right direction. It says, when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them, uh, directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. Even there, he's, he's still like, there's, we, need to, we need to organize this a little bit. God's a God of order. I love that. He's like, we need, we need 50, we need 100s because I'm about to do something. You need to get ready for it. So make sure you're ready. Get, get ready. Someone say, get ready. I told you I'm getting you to participate in this. You need to participate for your breakthrough. You can't just sit and, ah. You need to participate for your breakthrough. Here's the... Here's another truth you need to know for your, about your breakthrough. In the middle of your need, keep your eyes on the source. Keep your eyes on the source. See, man, when, when we, are, we are in need, it's really easy to, to start shifting our focus towards our need. And you can either be led by your need or you can be led by faith. Oh, uh, uh, and, and, and it looks very subtly different, doesn't it? I need to get a job. I need counseling. I need, this. and you, you have a need, but are you being led by your need or are you being led by faith? Oh, keep your eye on the source. When, when I take my kids out for dinner, some of you are going to take your kids out to dinner today, and they, they're looking at the menu. On, the, on one side of the menu is the, the items, and the other side of the menu is what? The prices, right? How many of you know where, where your kids' eyes are at? On, on the, on the stuff. oh yeah, that looks good. Let me get that appetizer. Give me some wings, dad, and, and let me get some chips and salsa and get that guacamole. You know what? Get the table side guacamole, not this little one. Give me the table side guacamole. And, and they're, just, they, they're just ordering whatever they want. I tested my kids. I gave them like different allowance and, and we went out to eat and, and I told them, this meal's on you. This meal's, how many know where their eyes are at now? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You want to share a hamburger? 
Uh, we'll just split it down the middle. And you know what? We're just going to have water. We're going to have water. Put lemon. We're going to make lemonade right here. We just need the salt, the sugar. We're going to make our own lemonade. We're good. Uh, see, but they don't need to do that. They don't, they don't need to do that because, because why? Because daddy's at the table. Come on, somebody. So, some, of you guys are, some of you guys don't know that you're in the middle of your need. Daddy's at the table. You have a scarcity mindset. You're going, oh, if I could just get some of that, some of that, uh, you know, uh, uh, soda drink, and I get some of that appetizer. You don't even know. You're looking at the prices. You should just be looking to the source. Come on, man. In the middle of your need, keep your eyes on the source where there is some great vision. Don't tell God how. Tell God where. Use me, God. Keep your eye on the source. Matthew 14 says, Jesus says, okay, bring them to me. They're like, I, I got this. I got this, guys. I can take, bring them to me, he said. And he directed them to sit down on the grass, taking the loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples. I love this part of this story. He says he gave them to his disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. You see, as long as the disciples kept coming back to the source, there was enough, need, there was enough provision for the people. As long as the disciples, that Jesus... Just picture it, okay? Jesus is cutting up fish and chips, okay? He's, he's cooking it up, all right? He's just breaking. He's got five and three, but he just keeps breaking it. It just keeps breaking it and breaking it, and he's just putting on one disciple's plate, and the disciple goes and gives it to this group of 50 over here, and then there's another table over here going, we were first, though. We, Peter, we were first. He's like, I got you. I got you because I know where the source is. I'm going to come back, and here's the source. Let me get some more. And no matter what, even though I knew there was five and three, I know if I keep coming back, there's going to be more for that hundred. Okay, I just keep coming back, and there's more. There's more. There's more. Keep your eyes on the source. He is the provider of every need. Keep your eye on the source. In the middle of your need, keep your eye on the source. Here's the next truth we need to understand, and that is don't forget what he's done. In the middle of your need, don't forget what he's done. Look, I promise you, you continue your, your faith walk. You continue this journey. Walk with God. He's going to lead you again into a season of need where you need a breakthrough. It's going to happen. And in that moment, man, so many of us, we, we develop short-term memory loss. Let's be honest. We do. We start, to, we start to worry. We start to doubt. We start to fret. And we start to just, you know, some of us are really good uh, at this, some of us are really good. Short-term memory loss when another need comes up. The disciples did this. They had another case where they were presented with another need and they were in trouble and they started worrying. And Jesus just, he just gets, you can see him just getting upset. Like he gets angry at him. Matthew chapter 16, this is after the fact. There's another situation of need, another circumstance. And Peter, and, and, and Jesus looks at his disciples and he goes, do you still not understand I mean, can't, I, I just picture Jesus like, come on, guys, get it together. You're with me. You're what, do you, are you stupid or something? Do you not understand? I mean, I can, can you see him just, do you remember the loaves and the fishes? Don't you remember what I did in that last season? Don't you remember when I gave you the breakthrough before? What is the matter with you? Don't forget, in the next season of me, don't forget what God has done. Here's the last point I have for your breakthrough in the middle of your need. Make prayer a first response instead of a last resort. We need to make prayer a first response instead of a last resort. There is no way that you're going to experience the fullness of God, the power of God, the breakthroughs that God wants to do in your life if you do not develop this habit of prayer in your life. To make prayer, and some of us are really good problem solvers and so when we get to a need we start to problem solve we think it through we think if i just move this and we start to problem solve and if i if i i can formulate a plan we'll even call some friends call some help call in for some reinforcements before we cry out to god we need to, if you want breakthrough in your life you need to start making the, your first response prayer instead of your last resort jesus was a great example of this when he the first thing he did was lifted up the, the bread and the fish and he gave thanks and he prayed to god you say, well, man, how about me then? How do, I, how do I do that? How do I get my breakthrough? Let me, let me show you in Philippians chapter 4, a few verses. How to, how, to, how to pray in your breakthrough, the power of prayer. Philippians chapter 4, Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, gives us four things that you need to do if you're going to experience a breakthrough in your life. 
Now, I don't care what that need is. There's a lot of different needs that are present today. I know there is. But it doesn't matter what they are. If you do these four things, you're going to position yourself for a breakthrough. Amen? Let me give them to you. And then we're going to go through Philippians chapter 4 together. Let me give you the first point that Paul makes. Write it down. Number one, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. I want you to write that down. That's, 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 I mean, ever like had like those times with God where you just were just basically worrying. It was a worry prayer. It was just a worry filled prayer. God says, don't worry about anything. He actually, that's actually the verse, Philippians 4, 6. Do not worry about anything. The Amplified Translation says, don't fret, don't fear, don't have any anxiety. That may be one of the single most difficult commands in the entire Bible. Every one of us have broken that command. Every single, because we're natural worriers. Every one of us are. But did you know God says, he, he commands us, do not worry. So, so yet, yeah, there's do not murder, do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not lie. But then God also says, do not worry. We break that commandment all the time. Jesus said it like this, not in your notes, Matthew 6, 34. He said, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble. And that's where we get into trouble, because we're so regretting the past, we're worrying about the future, it messes up today. What is worry? Write these down. I had too many notes for your outline. Write it down for me, though. Worry is focusing on my fears instead of God. Worry is focusing on my fears instead of God. That's what worry is. It's practical atheism. Worry is acting like you're an orphan. It's acting like you don't have your daddy sitting at the table. It's acting like you don't have a father in heaven who cares for you. That's what worry is. See, in the middle of your need, if your response is worry, you're not positioned for breakthrough. If you want to get breakthrough in your life, you're going to have to break the habit of worry. You're going to have to learn how to shift from worry to worship. Okay? So so how do we do that? How do we make the shift? Write this one down. You shift your focus by prayer and fasting. That's how you shift your focus. This is is the mark of Christianity, man. And, And I'm calling our church back to this. And we do this two times a year, January and August. We spend time, 21 days of prayer and fasting, if you want, a, a, fasting doesn't even sound fun. I understand fasting, you kind of cringe and stuff, but, but fasting is an instrument of breakthrough in your life. If we, if we learn, fasting is, God does not want to punish you. That's not what fasting is, man. Fasting is not for, it's, fasting is disconnecting ourselves from the world. Prayer is connecting ourselves to God. That's why you need both. If you want breakthrough, you need both. You need to connect closer to God and remove yourself further from the world. So the next 21 days, here's what we're going to do. We do it every January and August. We have our morning prayer gatherings from Monday through Friday from 6 to 7 a.m. The church is open, and I'm challenging you to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit. And even if you make a few of those or make them consistently, however God leads you, but we're opening the church, and we're going to spend time in God's presence, even if it was a few minutes before work, just to come in and spend time. Then we have our Tuesday evening prayer gathering that's kind of constantly going, not just in this season. But that's from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Um, this Tuesday is actually our night of worship. And if you want some breakthrough, man, come to a, a, an hour and a half of worship and let's seek God and press in for breakthrough. If you want information on fasting, go to the website, ilovediscovery.church slash 21 days, slash 21 days. Give you some information about it. But can I tell you something? Fasting is not for the strong. It's not. Fasting is for the weak. Fasting is for common, ordinary people that desperately need God to show up in their life. That's who fasting is for. It's not for the super spiritual. It's for those of us who know we need God. And if you're uncomfortable with that, go online, check it out. We'll be talking about it in our prayer gatherings more. And I want to invite you to to, to switch your focus from worry to worship through prayer and fasting. And here's the second thing Paul tells us to do for your breakthrough. And that is to pray about everything. Not just your big prayers, not just your big needs. There's no small request to God. Do you know that? There's no small request. There's no big request. God just says, you pray for everything. Well, I don't have enough money for my kids' braces, and I really want to get them braces. You mean I can pray for that, Pastor? Yes, you can pray for that. Every need. Well, I'm starting to break out in my face, pimp, getting all pimply again, Pastor. Can I, pray, can I pray for that? Yeah, you can pray for that. Pray, you can pray for everything. You can just pray. God wants you to pray about everything. The Philippians chapter 4 continues. Don't worry about anything. Instead... Pray about everything. 
Tell God what you need. Look at this next verse, 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about what happens to you. See, that verse is saying you have a choice. You can either carry your own worries and anxieties or let God carry them for you. And the choice is yours. You can live under that anxiety and stress and the need to control your need, or you can give it to God. And God is just looking at our needs going, why are you still worrying about that? Don't you know I love you? I'll take that. I'll carry that for you because I love you. I want to carry that for you so you can be free. Come on, who wants to be free? Who want to be free, you guys? Pray about everything. Let me show you this really cool verse Jesus said in the message paraphrase version, Matthew 6, 6. Jesus says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place where you're not tempted to role play before God. And so this is important. So I just, man, I'd love for you to show up on, on, you know, and be a part of some morning prayer collectively and just seeking God. But, but I'd say even more so, you need your own quiet time with God. Because what will end up happening, if you don't have that, that'll turn into just role play. If it's not a part of your life, if prayer is not a part of your life and fasting is a, is a part of the rhythm of your life, then what you'll end up doing is you just coming in and role playing like you, you're anointed and, and you're empty. And everybody else looks like you're anointed, but man, inside, you know, and God knows. You're empty. Uh, Jesus says, look, don't just role play. Look, find your own quiet time. But now I'm not saying don't, please come, still come, okay? Come on out. We want you to be here with us. But Jesus says, find that secluded, quiet place. that you, You're not going to be tempted to role play before God. Just be there, simply and honestly as you can manage, and check it out. He says, the focus will shift from your need to your God. The focus will shift from your worry to worship, and then you will begin to sense the power of God. Then you'll be able to sense the grace of God as you do that. How many of you want to sense the grace and power of God? Man, we need to shift, you guys, from worry to worship. Here, pray about everything. Here's the third thing Paul tells us to do, and that is to thank God in everything. Thank God in everything. Did you know that gratitude is the breakthrough attitude? Man, I like that. I like that. Come on. Gratitude is the breakthrough attitude. The more grateful you are, the more breakthroughs you're going to experience in life. The less grateful you are, the less breakthroughs you're going to experience in your life. It's as simple as that. Why would God take you to step two, level two, if you aren't even thankful for level one? Why would God, why would God give you more need and more blessing if you aren't thankful and grateful for what he's already done that's where it goes there in philippians next it says ask god for whatever you need but always do it like ask but always do it with thanksgiving he says it's okay to ask i mean whatever you need big small whatever whatever you need just ask it but do it with thanksgiving he says asking him with a thankful heart for all he's done so if my kids always or your kids always come up to you and they go daddy daddy i need i need i need i want i want i want my kids gave me Christmas lists this last week. I almost slapped them. <laughs> Here, and, and can I tell you, it was the most expensive list I've ever seen. This one was thousands of dollars. I was, ooh. But yeah, I need, I need. I want, I want, I want. Uh, and, and you're, or mommy, mommy, mommy. I need, I need, I need. I want. And there was never, I love you. Thank you so much, daddy. Thank you so much, mommy. We're gonna, you don't, you're going to feel like a vending machine. Like I got a lever on myself, and that's, I'm here for just your needs and what you want. Can I tell you something? God is not your vending machine. God is, God is not your vending machine that you just can g- continue to come to. I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. Daddy, 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 daddy. He says, look, I want to take care of you. I am your daddy. Daddy's at the table. But when you come to me, no matter big or small, can you just be grateful? Can you just say, I love you, daddy? Can you just say, thank you for what you've already done? Ask for whatever you need, God says. But just do it, thanking me for what I've already done. First Thessalonians chapter 5, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Like, just be thankful for what I've already done. Thank you for my breath. Thank you for my provision. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my mind. Thank you for my ears and my senses. Thank you. Thank you, God. You just start thanking him. Everything you have is a gift from God. He says, be grateful in all things. In all things, be grateful. Um, Notice he says in, though. He doesn't say for all things. You don't need to be grateful for all things, right? You might want to circle in because that's important. It's very, very, very important that you understand that. God doesn't say 
you need to be thankful in, uh, for all things. Like, don't thank God for cancer. Don't thank God for evil happening. We don't think that's, that's, you're not, we're not masochists. It's not, that's not what God wants you to, to do, to thank him. No, that's not, he didn't say thank him for all things. He says thank him in all things. Why? Because even in bad things, God can bring out something good. He can bring blessings out of buffeting. He can bring promises out of pain. He can bring good out of bad because that's what God does. That's the kind of God he is. He transforms the bad things in our lives into the good things for our good. So instead of saying, why God, why has this happened to me? What we should be asking is, what do you want me to learn from this God? Where, where, where do you want me to discover, develop, and where, do, where can I advance your will in my life, God? What, what, are you, what are you showing me, God? All right, let's go to the fourth habit. I worry about nothing. I pray about everything. I thank God in all things. I begin to develop these habits, and here's, here's the fourth one. And that is stay focused on true things. Stay focused on true things. That's what the Bible says in Philippians 4, 8. This is all about a mental change, a mental fix. If you want to break through in your life, you need to learn how to mentally switch. You know, it's, walking in the Spirit is like a switch that you need to turn on and leave on. That you, are, that you are constantly aware and mindful of the Spirit with you. That you are constantly communing with God, walking with Him. It's a mental switch that's on. You, if you want breakthrough and you want to develop the power of prayer in your life, you need, to, you, need to, you need to understand that prayer is not something that it should ever cease. Prayer is a conversation with God that should be ongoing, that I focus, I stay fixed mentally on true things. Look what it says in Philippians 4, 8. Fix your thoughts on things that are true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable and fill your mind with thoughts that are excellent and worthy of praise. You might want to notice, notice these three phrases there. Fix your thoughts, think about things, fill your mind. He's talking about a mental habit. And that's why we do 21 days. We want to develop a different habit now. You, you, some of you have developed some habits that are unhealthy, that are, uh, that are contrary to, to the direction of God's will for your life. We want to develop some habits, so we need to fix our thoughts, think about things, and fill your mind. With what? With things that are true. I mean, where do you find things that are true in a world full of lies? The Word of God. You want breakthrough? You want, to, you, you want this mental switch? You want to fix your, your, your thoughts? Man, I'm telling you, you need to get into God's Word every day. Every day. That, that is where truth is, is found. And we think about the scale of how much time we spend on social media or TV or Netflix or other things. And then the seconds we spend on God's Word and we wonder why we're unhealthy. We wonder why that I don't feel good. And I, 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 you don't have truth in you. You have just a whole bunch of lies that you're filling your mind with. Get in God's word. Fix your thoughts. Think about things. Mental switch needs to happen. And then what's going to happen if, if we do those things, if we, if we practice those things, if I stop worrying and I kind of switch that, I kind of move it from worry to worship and through prayer and fasting. And I don't just pray about big things, but I just, I, I pray about everything. I'd be thankful for where I am, for what I have. And I'm not just being ungrateful. I start thanking God for where I am and what I have. And, and I start fixing my mind. Paul says there's a result that's going to happen because of that. Philippians chapter 4, 7 says, if you do this, you're going to experience God's peace. Man, there, there's a message I'm going to be bringing in a series, series called the, the Power of Peace. It, it is an instrument of breakthrough in your life. It's necessary for your breakthrough to, to be um, in harmony with God, with others, with the world, just to be at peace. He says, if you do these things, you're going to experience God's peace, which is far more powerful than we can understand. One translation says that it's the peace that surpasses understanding. You know what that means? It means there's no reason, there's no logical or rational explanation why I should be at peace because I'm flat broke, but I am. I know I still have a need. I know I'm still in pain. I know there still is the issue, but somehow... I, beyond my understanding, I can't even explain it. I can't really even comprehend it myself, but I have peace. I have, I have peace. That is, that is the necessary climate for your breakthrough that you are at. Peace. You start practicing these things, God will first begin breakthrough in you. Peace that surpasses understanding. We're going to worship God in just a moment together, and I want you not to get antsy on me. 
This is for this next six weeks. It's going to lead us all the way into our anniversary service. We're going to celebrate four years of Look What God Has Done on September 10th. Man, it's been amazing. This, this series of breakthrough, we're believing God for some specific breakthroughs, and I'm looking forward to sharing you about the vision and next steps of His church, of Christ's church here at Discovery. And, and, and I'm telling you, I'm in need. And you're, and you're probably going to go, well, we need you too, Jesus. We need you for that. Yes, we do. Uh, it, but this, in this series of breakthroughs, it's more than just, hey, we're seeking God for breakthrough for our church and for these things that we can do collectively as the, as the body of Christ. But, but you need breakthrough. I know it. I know there's an area of need. If you're walking with God, there is. There's an area of need. You need God to show up in. You need breakthrough. You need, you need a discovery. You need revelation. You need development. You need to be advanced. And we're seeking God for that. So in the last part of our services over the next six weeks where we encounter God and worship again, it's intentional. It's a breakthrough time. It's a time for us to, to apply the word of God. And, and right now what we're going to what we're going to kind of declare is like, I lean not on my own understanding because that could be a barrier. I don't get it, God. Like I, I don't, I can't understand or fathom how it's going to happen or what you're going to do, but I'm choosing today to not lean on my own understanding, but to trust in believing you. I'm putting it into your hands today as I begin this breakthrough season in my life, God, I'm laying everything down and I'm trusting you. Come on, let's stand together and let's declare, let's worship. Don't leave just yet, please. We're going to encounter God together with one voice. We lean not on our own understanding. Come on. <laughs> 